man. <laughs> Coach Meyer photo bombs everybody, so Sorry, man. I get him back. Did he give you any tips on that? Uh, photo bomb? No. no, you're just natural. I'm just, you know, was born with it. Was born with it. Thanks, mom and dad. <laughs> While we're rolling, talk, talk about that. You know, is it payback to get the do a little photo bomb? Oh no, I just saw him doing an interview, and I was walking past him. I was like, eh, might as well. Get a little, get a little FaceTime on TV because I always got my helmet on, so got to show the face a little bit. But he's been known to photo bomb. Yeah, like I see tons of pictures. He's always, if he's if he's in the background, he's gonna smile. So. Has he ever salmoned? Taylor, huh? Has he ever salmoned anybody? Has he just did a photo bomb? Salmoned? Yeah. No, he, he would never do that. What does that mean? You guys never seen the salmon? Oh, that thing. That's Zeke, Zeke always does it. That's how I started with the offensive line, though. Speaking of Zeke, the Zeke leap, it, it, it's, maybe it's kind of a thing now. Is that just him being Zeke or just that uh, ability he has now to hurdle guys? I mean, he's, I mean, he has all different kinds of ways to make people miss. Um, you know, it's, he's, he's a big dude, so it's hard to tackle him up high. So guys are just trying to take out his legs, and I guess he's just reacting. And, uh, you know, freak plays, really cool to see. Um, yeah. Yeah, for a guy that size. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think everybody knows that he's got, a, you know, that power and can run over people and run through arm tackles. But, you know, he can, he can cut on a dime. And, you know, he is a really good athlete, one of the best athletes we have on the team. So Taylor, how much better did you and the offensive line feel after this week as opposed to the game the week before when it did seem like you were frustrated? Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a huge confidence boost, obviously, to be able to, um, you know, perform at a, at a higher level. Uh, you know, it wasn't perfect, you know, and obviously we can still get better, um, not only as an offensive line, but as a whole uh, offensive unit. Um, so I think it was a confidence boost, uh, made us feel good to act, act, be able to act, actually go out there and get some offense, get some yards, put some points up, um, and things ran a little more smoothly for us. How good is this Indiana football team? I mean, when you get in Big Ten play, every, every team has good players. You know, a lot of players could go to any school in the Big Ten on these teams. Um, so obviously, not to take anything away from our out-of-conference schedule, um, but, you know, I think the, the level of players is going to be a little bit higher. Um, and obviously, there's going to be a lot of competition there because uh, I, I do think the Big Ten Conference is a, is a really good conference. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to get that going and uh, have that competition. They're off to a 4 0 start, first time in 25 years. And I'm sure you remember a couple of years ago, it was a dog fight over there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know I remember that game. We, we kind of went in there, kind of slept walk into there. And, um, you know, they obviously have a really explosive offense. And uh, last year at times they gave us kind of troubles with defense. Um, so, you know, we're just going to have to, you know, watch the film, game plan for them, uh, and then just play a complete game. Because, uh, you know, as with any team we come out and play, if we don't, you know, bring our A game, you know, we'll, we'll struggle. Even more recent history, I know you guys were disappointed the way you performed the first three quarters of last year's game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think you'll see the same things from them this year? Yeah, I mean, obviously they, they did some things that you know, slowed us down, gave us a little trouble, so I don't know why they wouldn't go back to that. I mean, you know, if, if it has a proven track record, why not do it again? Um, but obviously we, we're going to have our scouting report and, you know, hopefully have some of those things that tripped us up earlier last year cleaned up. So, um, you know, I'm confident with our game plan going and it'll be, uh, you know, really, really well uh, thought out. Oops, sorry. Urban yeah. said that uh, the early season struggles this year, no one was panicked because those were sort of inevitable growing pains. Yeah. Is the start of the Big Ten season sort of the point where the growing pains have to stop being growing pains? Um. I mean, you, you, you'd probably like them to be, but, um, you know, I think we just got so many, you know, playmakers on offense right now. We're just trying to, you know, figure out how we want to get the ball to certain players and, you know, how, how we want to go about, um, you know, running the offense. Um, so, I mean, you, you'd like for them to be, you know, gone, but, you know, that's just something that's going to have to work itself out, not, not something where, you know, we're going to decide when it ends. It's just going to have to happen, really. Taylor, I know that every season is a new season, but when an offense is playing well at the end of one year, like you guys obviously were mm -hmm. last year, how much do you maybe sort of think, yeah, this will carry over? We have a lot of a lot of the, you know veterans back, and we know yeah. the scheme and everything. Or how much is it really like starting over a completely new season each year? 
Well, I mean, it's it's definitely not completely starting over, brand new, but it's it's definitely not picking up where you left off. Um, you know, it's kind of in between because obviously we do have a, a lot of those players back, but we are missing some of those players that were, you know, key to our offense being, uh, you know, so successful. Um, and then obviously having so much time off of playing football, and then having a, a lot of guys out in spring, um, you know, you just kind of have to get that that cohesiveness back and. You know, it's not going to be as smooth or as fluid early on. Um, but like I said, we have a lot of the guys back, a lot of the pieces back. So, you know, I think we'll just keep improving and improving uh, as we did last year. This season, you guys are 4-0, you're number one in the country, and yet so many of your fans are like, okay, what's wrong with mm -hmm. this team? Um, <laughs> what do you guys think of that? I mean, you know, the motto is the grind. Yeah. Has it felt like a grind? Um. I mean that that's just kind of you know how our program structured is to, to you know it's hard you know so yeah but um I think that just comes with the expectations you know last year people were not expecting us uh, to do what we did and now everybody has that level of expectations to where we should be untouchable um, and they're going to hold us to those expectations you know whether that's fair or not that's not for me to say but um you know those are the expectations people have and if and if we don't perform you know to their expectations people are going to you know, criticize us and they're going to let us hear about it. I mean, do you feel that you guys are on the right track, that you're progressing the way you should be? Um, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, against Hawaii and Northern Illinois, um, our offense wasn't where we wanted it to be. Um, but I think, you know, with this past week, we kind of got it back on track. Um, and then we're just going to have to improve game to game because, you know, as we go deeper and deeper in our schedule, we're going to be facing tougher teams. Um, and then, you know, when it comes November, when it's time to compete for a championship, you know, that's when we have to be at our best and our, our highest capacity. Um, so, you know, it's just going out there, going back to work and just improving, you know, taking baby steps. How close are y'all to launching Ezekiel Elliott? You know, he had that big run against Virginia Tech, and since then he's kind of had to settle for 20 yarders. <laughs> I, mean, you know, yeah. I mean, do you feel like y'all are close to, yeah. you, know, you know what I mean, getting him back on the beam and that big play aspect? Yeah, I mean, because you know we were, you, you know, watch you video, watch you watch the yeah. film, and you know he, you know he's a, you know, somebody picks his ankle, you know he's a, he's one one play away, you yeah. know it's like a foot here or there, somebody clips his foot or you know shoestring tackle, um, and I think one that's just gonna come, you know those big plays are gonna come just from a bet, better execution blocking both from the offensive line and on the perimeter, um, and like I said, you just you know it's it's early in the season right now. Um, you know, and I think those runs will come. And you know, obviously, he's a great back. So, um, you know, we're we're close. We're really close. But you know, I think they'll come for sure. What about Braxton? Virginia Tech Braxton had two huge plays, and since then, he's kind of been. Yeah. It kind of seems like they're trying to figure out where is best suited to try to get him the ball. Does yeah. You guys kind of feel that same way too. I mean, you know, obviously with him switching positions it's been a huge adjustment for him but it's also that we have uh, this dynamic playmaker that we want to try to get the ball and um, you know I think the coaches are trying to figure out the best way to get him the ball um, you know we've, we've tried some things without with him out of the backfield um, you know different different types of you know passing intermediate long you know whatever it may be um, and yeah I think they are trying to just you know figure out what's what's the best way to get him the ball because a player like him you do want to get the ball um, but I don't. I don't really have a ton to say in that, right. and you know I'm not a offensive coordinator, so. It almost sounds you aspire like. To be. No, I'm just <laughs> it almost too, sounds, too much stress for me. <laughs> it almost sounds like when you're describing problems mm -hmm. that you guys have had this year, that it's almost that you just have too much of a good thing, so many expectations, so many weapons, yeah, and that you just is that reassuring in some sort of way. I mean, it, it, I yes. It's, because obviously, if it all comes together, and you know, I'd rather say when it all comes together, because I have all the confidence that it will. Um, you know, I think it'll be a really difficult offense to stop, um, and I already think, you know, in a way, we are, because um, teams are having to, you know, do all sorts of different things to slow us down. Um, but yeah, the, the, you know, that those expectations and you know, trying to get all those different guys the ball that you know deserve touches, you know. It's, you know, not so much stressful on you know myself, but you know the coaching staff because there's guys that deserve more touches, um, just because you know the way they practice and just their ability. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm can and also cannot see that being an issue. How many 
many times do you think you've blocked Joey Bosa in your career here? You've gone against him. Uh, every day. You know, I, I, at least we at least do one-on-one -on -one pass rush every single day, so you get a couple reps of that. Um, in spring, it's like all ones-on-ones, -on -ones, so you know you get you know 30, 30 reps probably, 30 something uh, against him. So. Throughout the season, I get to go against them every day. You know, on Tuesdays a lot, we'll do one offense versus one defense for you know at least a set. Um, so you know, I do get to go against him, get reps against him, which is good to you know have that high level of competition to kind of keep myself sharp. Um, so I do get to go against him, and I'm you know it's difficult, obviously, but you know it's needed, it's necessary. You get sick of him? No. Uh -uh. That's the guy I'm tired of. <laughs> Um, I think if I did, I'm at the wrong place. You know, I shouldn't be playing football or playing here. Um, you know, because you, you come here to compete with the best. Um, and we definitely have that. So I enjoy it because I know it makes me better. Um, and like I said, while it is difficult, it is something I need and it is something that I like to do. You've seen the projections, though. You could be the first guy taken in the draft. Mm -hmm. You've seen the projections about you. You could be a high draft choice also and stuff. Do you? You ever sit there and say to yourself, "Hey, we're kind of two elite guys going against each other." You understand what I'm saying? Does that ever cross your mind? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I don't want to be like conceited about myself right, in I any know. way. Yeah. Um, you know, but obviously, I think we're both high-level players, and you know, if you're playing at a high-level football, the only way to get better is to go against guys that are at that level. Um, so he's, you know, awesome for me to have on this yeah. team. Um, and, you know, not just him, you know, we have a bunch of defensive linemen that are playing at a really high level. Um, so I think, you know, that's good for myself. And I think, you know, myself and some of the other offensive linemen are good for them um, in their development to keep getting better. You, you might, though, have to make a living blocking him eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What sets him apart? What, 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 why is he, why is he talked about on the level he is right now? I'm talking about Joey. I think he's just so complete. Um, you know, obviously everybody knows, you know, his pass rushing ability. Um, but he's very disruptive in the run game. He can hold gaps really well and shed blocks really well. Um, you know, just a big, strong guy, but he also has a you know, quick get off. Um, you know, he can go to power. You know, everybody can see a season bull rush, yeah. but he's got great hands and great quickness. Um, so, pretty much if you mess up one thing in your technique or your set or, you know, your run block, whatever it may be, you know, he's going to take advantage of that. And on top of that, he's extremely confident. What kind yeah. of relationship do you develop with I mean it happens I'm sure across the whole team when you have a guy who's kind of the guy that you go against uh -huh. when it's one versus ones and I guess like for you and Joey it's like three years now yeah of this like how has your relationship developed when you end up banging heads with the same guy for three years yeah I mean I, for one you know I get along with everybody on the team so um, there's never been like any animosity you know you go out there you compete um, and then you know it's nothing personal uh, but obviously, I have a lot of respect for him as a player, and you know, me and him get along great. Actually, you know, the position group that the offensive line probably gets along with best is the defensive line, uh, you know, because we are the trenches of the team. Um, so I think you know, th there is a bond of playing on the line of scrimmage uh, within that. But you know, everybody knows Joey's. You know, he's got a different personality. You know, he's in, you know into the EDM and stuff like that, and you know, he seems really laid back, but. Um, you know, when it comes to workouts and practice, he's an incredibly hard worker. Uh, so, and he's, like I said, he's just been awesome to have around. Where growing up, if someone had told you undefeated Ohio State, undefeated Indiana, and game day was actually at one point considering going to the game, what, what would you have said to that? <laughs> it, it's just, yeah. doesn't that make their success more remarkable because it's come so recently? Ooh, Indiana's? Yeah. Um... I don't. I mean, I don't want to call it remarkable because, like I said, I, you know, I've I watched the film on these guys and I know that all the teams in the Big Ten have really good players, um, and it is hard to win games. Um, so you know, I don't want to take for granted the success we've had, you know, because it's not like, you know, we've won games by chance. Um, so I don't want to say I'm surprised, but you know, they, they are as of late performing really well. So you know, that's good for them. You're good. You're in the sideline with uh, Coach Warner. He's taking on an expanded role as offensive coordinator this year, mm -hmm. kind of being the head guy. Has, uh, has your relationship with him changed at all, like kind of what you guys do on game day as your game's going on? Uh, no. It's the, pretty much the exact same. And I think that's kind of what he wanted was staying on the sideline because, uh, you know, most coordinators are up in the box. 
So, you know, they can kind of see how everything develops and goes out. But, you know, I think he knows that it's, it's good for us, um, us being his position group, for him to be down there to make on-field adjustments uh, with us instead of having to go through, you know, a middleman and talk to somebody on the headset and, you know, get the thing, everything drawn out because um, he's obviously, you know, a really great offensive mind. So it's good for us to have him down there on the field, but I also think that adds a level of difficulty for him doing his job as the OC. What did Indiana throw at y'all last year that y'all were 10, 11 games into the season that befuddled you guys a little bit? Because obviously that was not a great offensive game until yeah. the fourth quarter and Jalen Marshall show started. You know? Right, exactly. Well, what was it do you remember about that game defensively? Because most people were writing it off, you know? It's yeah. Like y'all are getting ready for Michigan. Right? Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, you know, they, they have their base defense, which that alone, you know, they just played well. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, they did get into some odd, which, you know, early this season has, has shown uh, to give us some issues. And, you know, we struggle with it a, a little bit. Um, so, you know, it was, it's not like it was anything like out of this world. You know, they, they came in with their base defense, they played some odd, and they executed well. They, you know, they just played well. Yeah. Gotcha. Coach Warner admitted that last week was tough on him. Mm -hmm. Did he let you guys see that, or did did he try to hide that from you? Not at all. He's actually he was really positive. You know, he seemed like he was in really good spirits. Um, you know, and, I, and I'm happy that he handled it that way because, you know, if he would have showed that he was you know bothered and stressed and stuff like that, I think that would have like permeated throughout our unit uh, and kind of brought us down. So I think he did an awesome job of staying really positive with us. And, you know, saying, like, you know, I haven't lost any faith in you guys. I love you guys. And I have all the confidence in the world that we're going to get this going. Um, and then I think that showed on Friday. You know, there was great energy, and everybody was really positive. So I think that was awesome.